Ja, herzlich willkommen äh, zur Lias DevConf 2021, heute am 18. März. Ähm, schön, dass ihr so zahlreich erschienen seid. Ich äh, freue mich, hier Wolfgang Schmidt Silex von der Fachhochschule Dortmund begrüßen zu können ähm, mit einem Vortrag zum Thema Accessibility oder auch auf Deutsch Barrierefreiheit. Und äh, ähm, ja, das ist ja ein Thema, was uns in der Elias Community jetzt im vergangenen Jahr ähm, sehr stark beschäftigt hat und sicherlich auch die nächste Zeit noch sehr stark beschäftigen wird. Und wir haben uns da bisher ähm, an vielen Stellen sehr an ähm, Detail Fragen aufgehalten oder an konkreten Implementierungsfragen. Aber was ich bisher noch, was wir bisher, glaube ich, noch nicht hatten, ist so ein großer Rundumschlag, was denn eigentlich mit Accessibility gemeint sein könnte, wie man das eigentlich genau sehen muss, was ist Barrierefreiheit, wie, äh, warum hat das vielleicht nicht nur was mit Screenreadern zu tun, sondern auch damit, dass ich hin und wieder mal Barrierefreiheit auf Deutsch sage, statt Accessibility, einfach damit, dass wir unser Programm benutzbar gestalten wollen, nicht nur für Leute, die ähm, Englisch können und gut sehen können. Und darüber wird euch der Wolfgang jetzt äh, eine Dreiviertelstunde was erzählen. Und da freue ich mich sehr drauf. Vielen Dank für deine Zeit und ich gebe dir das Wort. Auf geht's. Ja, vielen Dank, Richard. Ja, um, I switch to English uh, and I try to do my best uh, to keep it that way. Um, so this is not a very technical um, presentation. It's just a sort of different approach to um, give you uh, an overview about um, accessibility and uh, what it means when you uh, when you have to develop a uh, user interface um, for the World Wide Web. So the approach is what uh, I say with my first uh, sheet slide um, is about cars and websites and how technical features and user interfaces can fool people and what you can do to satisfy people's needs. Um, so what do people expect um, when they uh, want to drive a car? or when they want to use a website. So um, I hope um, that if you see some strange things um, people do with cars, that you um, understand um, more of what accessibility means. Because it's not just um, a topic of uh, disabilities and people who can't see um, or can't hear. Uh, it's just um, a topic of, uh, of the whole world How it how it works and what we do um, when we present information um, via the World Wide Web uh, to people. So the agenda for today is for my presentation. I just have to switch so I can't see the big blue button now, but I see my presentation. The agenda is um, I tell you a bit about myself, um, some um, examples with uh, design. Uh, in cars and in websites, um, then an overview of what accessibility really means, and a bit all about um, methods, uh, how to avoid accessibility problems when you develop a website or a user interface. So about myself, uh, my name is Wolfgang Schmidt-Zielex, I'm a computer scientist um, and I studied in Dortmund um, at the Fachhochschule Dortmund where I work now. Um, I left it uh, in the early 90s um, and came back just last year um, as an employee now um, and it is really nice to be back uh, to the roots. Um, uh, I'm there at um, a new um, space or new place uh, that was um, uh, developed last year, D digital accessibility in studies and teaching. So I um, am a person who, um, who gives services to students and lecturers um, to, um, to make their stuff accessible. Um, I'm sort of consulting um, within the university for other purposes in some projects. And um, one part is um, just looking um, at Ilias and um, joining the, um, the special interest group accessibility there and just um, give some, some advice what, uh, what is good to do and what is uh, perhaps a problem with Ilias. So this is what I do 
here. And I am part-time freelancer, by the way, um, not much anymore, but I was um, for a couple of years a developer um, for the World Wide Web myself. Started in the, uh, the mid-90s and um, stopped it a couple of years ago and I'm just more in a consultant now and not, uh, not a developer anymore. So, um, when my name is called, sometimes people say I'm an accessibility expert. So I know much about it because I, I have, uh, I have a lot of experience with people um, with disabilities and um, with uh, the World Wide Web and how web pages uh, work and uh, the techniques um, people use um, within the internet, just like uh, uh, Braille um, equipment or uh, screen readers and all this stuff. Um, because I um, I'm working in this area for about 25 years now at the universities nearby and now for uh, just one year for the Fachhochschule Dortmund. Um, so I know a lot about that. So um, what people think when they say, whoa, he's an accessibility expert, there are two, th two, two um, things um, out of a wide range of what people might think of an accessibility expert. Is he some member of some sort of justice league just fighting for people's rights? This is a good thing to do. So is he a good guy? Or is he just somebody like a White Walker you might know uh, from Game of Thrones just uh, coming out of the dark land of accessibility and to interfere with what you do. So you're just developing stuff and somebody comes and says, well, oh, that's not good. So you have to do it better. So this is a bit of what um, What's happening now? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy or something like that? Um, but he's neither the one nor the other. So um, what we are when we talk of accessibility and we want to do things better is we are just part of the whole community that works on, on, on a special topic like Elias here. So um, we see or we want to improve um, Elias, and uh, that's what we do when we when we work in the special interest group or um, in other interest groups as well. So everybody wants to wants to improve the Elias, and we all pull into the right direction. Sometimes we get in the way of each other, but uh, we just talk, and then we just make it better, hopefully. So that's what we try to do. So. I'm neither a, neither a really good guy nor, nor the bad guy, so it's just like uh, let's uh, point out what's really important and try to solve the problems we, um, we encounter. But now to the first topic. Uh, we talk about cars and websites and um, I start with the cars um, in the early years, um, the early days. Um, it was uh, I think it was really the first car-like uh, vehicle that we see here. It's the Benz Patent Motorwagen. Um, it was invented uh, nearly, ex almost exactly 100 years before the first website uh, was created in 1989. So um, what this vehicle shows is um, well, it worked for for um, bringing people from one place to to another. But what we see is, it's just um, for um, standards of today, um, highly uncomfortable. So it's not really um, nice to sit there in the open. Um, but it might be easier to maintain than today's vehicles, just like uh, complicated cars we have today. It is very difficult to to maintain them all by yourself, for example, or it is very expensive when you get it uh, to the garage. So um, this just like compare it with the first websites we had in the early days uh, of the World Wide Web. And what we have today is um, the comfort of cars and vehicles uh, that are in traffic. Um, and you can't see the the comfort here in this picture, but this is um, what is now um, in in the room where the engine uh, is stored. But um, the comfort has one problem: um, for all the car can do with its horsepower and all this 
electric stuff that's inside. Um, it's it's a complicated machine, much more complicated than what we had just 20 years, 30 years ago. And of course, much more complicated than 100 years ago. So what I want to do quite often in these days is with cars of the family of his friends to change a light bulb. And I can't do it really nicely and smoothly because it is so complicated to do just the, the easiest thing with it. So um, it is more complex now to, to do even, even easy stuff with a car today. So um, compared to complex content management systems or learning management systems, when uh, you take it and you want to maintain it, it's more difficult than just a static website you had uh, 20 years ago or so. So this is just one of a couple of examples. So a second example I have is uh, this is a, a German text uh, from Switzerland. Um, I have the translation, I have translated it myself. So it is a, a person called Patrick Kirchner. Um, he um, failed uh, with his car the test um, of a technical expect, uh, inspection agency and the reversing gear was missing in his car. So it was it was implemented, but it didn't work. So um, it was probably uh, some el electronic problems um, where the car um, didn't recognize that it is good to do um, uh, to, to reverse now. Um, and uh, the car thought it's not a good idea. So you can't do it now. And so the complete car failed this test. So um, this is what's, uh, what's, what's happening when um, very complex systems, um, well, you can't see all the time what they are doing and you have the same or a very similar problem with, uh, with other vehicles, just like aircraft or something. When you, uh, when you think of, uh, of the air, airplane crashes we had uh, a couple of last years, um, um, when when uh, planes crashed because some uh, thing didn't work really good because it was too complex or some uh, some data was was uh, was identified wrongly or something like that and this is what happens in in, in complex systems so I have uh, another example for that um, but uh, I can't show it in the slide because it's copyright material, I guess. So what I did is I have um, the website for that. So um, what modern cars really, we can have a look at this one. Um, what, uh, what happens uh, when they are designed very, um, yeah, very, Faulty, I say. So uh, it's a lowered car, just like um, many others, and they're just scraping on the ground in some conditions, on some some road condi conditions. Um, and uh, that's what happens when when you just um, when you just don't think about things like that. So, and it's not just the cars that were lowered by by other people or by individuals who want just to have a have a really good looking car. Um, sometimes the cars it's just like they were they were bought um, from the company. It's just the same. I live uh, in my country uh, in my home hometown here in the city center, and uh, around the corner there is a car park, and uh, you you have to go. Uh, down a little ramp this car park and in the summer when I have the, the window open I can't see the car park but I, I can hear where it is or I can hear so every half an hour some some um, some front bumper scraping on the on the on the ground because um, they are just too low for this kind of uh, uh, of ramp and it's not really really a problem in, in, in street building or, or car park uh, uh, to build a car park but it's a problem of the cars because they were designed in a very fashionable way, but um, that makes problems sometimes. So um, that's what uh, what uh, happens in, in, in car design, um, for example. So um, this uh, is an example of a car that might um, might look like one of those uh, I hear when I come uh, uh, when I have um, my window open. 
and uh, and hear them scraping on the ground. So this is an example uh, I found that in the internet um, f uh, where someone um, hits the just uh, uh, the edge of the road with his car in some some sort of accident. So um, a very popular um, problem that Mercedes had a couple of years ago. So I say it's uh, today's design and features, but uh, this one is um, is a couple of years ago. So it was 1997, and you might have heard of the Yelk test or something like that. I have this picture because this one is uh, is uh, Creative Commons, uh, so I can use it. But um, I have the real picture of uh, of the test um, in the 90s, 1990s um, uh, in the web. So I show it uh, to you a couple of minutes later. So what the elk test is um, is in Sweden we um, the uh, the Swedish people for a couple of decades they perform um, this sort of evasive maneuver test. So when uh, suddenly something uh, appears on the street, the, um, the car um, or the driver um, wants, to, wants to go away and don't want to hit this uh, thing that, uh, that, that comes, on the, comes to the street. So um, they just try all the time with all new vehicles if uh, they pass this test when you just want, uh, want to um, go around this uh, thing this elk maybe um, which comes on the uh, which which stands on the street so um, this uh, failed with the early a class um, of Mercedes the first one and they had to redesign it so this um, kind of accident doesn't happen anymore so I have found this original picture at Flickr just in a very little um, way, I try to make it bigger for you. So this was uh, the original picture that uh, went around the world um, 24 years ago, um, when the car really just turned over um, when you want to avoid a crash. So uh, this shouldn't happen. And this was a design failure and it was uh, it was corrected later um, by Mercedes. So um, these things happen, uh, and they happen, still happen uh, like, like that. Not really this kind, because uh, cars of this size, very high, but very small, they um, are not developed uh, in, in, in masses these days. But we might go back to that because um, of climate change and all this stuff. Perhaps the cars uh, become smaller, and then perhaps all these um, these uh, forces with uh, turning around um, will become a problem again. So um, they check, or they have to check. So these were all examples of uh, of car designs that might look good that do what they well the cars they really they really go their way when you want it but um these are problems things that doesn't work really really up to the end so um these things happen when you don't think of all the things that can happen when you drive a car so um so this is a bit of annoying for people who have the problem that their front bumper um, just gets scraped or when the car is spinning around or turning turning on top. Um, so this is uh, something we we want to avoid when you when we do new stuff or we develop new stuff. So but what happens also is that there is stuff that is really good. But it is um, it is uh, changed uh, in some in some way. So what I show you now is something that was really good is just maintained or um, changed in a different way, just like this one. So when somebody who's not really an engineer or 
somebody who who just uh, wants to wants to fix a failure, a very individual failure um, in his car, he just does something like that, just uh, make a wooden door or just um, put a seat some uh, of some kind into the car, and you have uh, a couple of. Um, of this uh, of these pictures in this website I show or I, I've uh, given here, I think I, this one isn't a hyperlink, so I just started so much viral by hand. Fix your car. So I'll put it back here. Tup, tup, tup. Something like a rear bu rear bumper is this way. This is a picture I, sh I showed you. Um, okay, tailing light. This is stuff. Some things are really nice. I think. Oh, this one is good. So um, when. Uh, uh, when some parts are missing, just uh, just try to do it yourself to fix it uh, in, a, in a very, very special way. Um, this is quite cool, just a compact disc as a, as a cover for the, for the gas tank, uh, really crazy stuff. So um, I don't know if this is all real things that happened in the world, but I... Um, I think it might be so. Uh, this is this is quite funny, funny stuff. So, um, and this is cars, of course, and uh, this happens in the world. It's not allowed in Germany or in in, in many other countries, but people do this stuff uh, nonetheless, um, and, and and try to and try to fix uh, things in their own way. Um, so, um, but this is. This is similar. You can, can you you can look at this and say, "Oh, this is crazy. I would never do that." But in a way, we are doing it all the time with websites. So we have a really good content management system, and we have a, a template that is really good designed, and we have to have to adapt it somehow in a different uh, in a different manner. Um, and so we we just just putting some new stuff to it and change the things that were okay and might although we don't uh, we don't know it perhaps um, we might change it uh, in a way that is not accessible for for people or well you, you can't you can't sell this is these these cars when you um, when you when you put things like that on, on on them so nobody would would buy it but in websites it's like um, you do something; it works um, how you intend it to work, and you sell it or you give it back to the community, and it seems all right. But it happens that um, the stuff is not really good, and something happened inside it that uh, people can't use it really. And um, with the with the seat you see here, with a chair um, instead of a of a car seat, it's just like the person bought it. It, uh, he, the person wanted to use it and it opens the door and then it sees, oh, this is a chair and this is not a car seat. So this is what happens when you use websites. You just say, wow, this is a good site and this is a good uh, um, web page or, or a system um, or a service. And when you use it, you, 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 you find uh, you find out that something's wrong with it. You can't use it in the in the purpose you wanted to use it, and that's what um, what this uh, this is all about. So if um, if we would build cars like websites, like we do build websites, not we as a community. This is not an Ilias uh, issue. It's just like uh, websites all over the world with different content management systems or even in uh, in in uh, websites that are static uh, HTML websites um, if we would um, build cars like we built websites um, in the world they would look like uh, like this for example it's just like uh, like um, this car made out of uh, out of 
beer boxes. Uh, I don't know how, what's the what's the real name is in in English. Just like uh, where the beer um, bottles are stored in, or or this half car. Um, I don't know what what the purpose of this was. Perhaps um, the backside was just crashed, and uh, the person who owns this car wants uh, wanted to wanted to keep the front part and just uh, drive it. All this stuff. So um, all these vehicles they they work, um, but they are not allowed uh, on the streets, at least not in Germany or in Europe. Um, so um, this is uh, a thing where regularities um, um, are um, um, they forbid um, that these kind of vehicles are on the streets and in the traffic. So um, we don't have this uh, regularities, the strong regularities in the World Wide Web, although the laws are uh, stricter now for um, uh, for governmental uh, websites or something like that. Or for for uh, we at the university, we need to um, we need to follow regularities that say, um, well, the website must uh, must meet some specifications, uh, otherwise you can't use it. And that's what, uh, what we um, have to look at when we, um, for example, use ELIAS as a learning management system for our students. If um, the, the, the ELIAS would be, uh, would be, um, uh, built just like one of those cars, uh, we couldn't we couldn't uh, give it to the to the students because the law forbids it. So this is what we what we have to look at. So, so this is all this old stuff I showed you, and uh, some some of the newer stuff I I, I showed you, and um, even things that uh, that seem to be a good idea. Um, can uh, can fail even modern designs can fail so um, this is not really modern this is a Sinclair C5 uh, built in 1985 or a couple of years uh, before that but uh, it was uh, was um, the selling start in 1985 um, as I when I recall it correctly um, it is a car some call don't call it a car. It's uh, it's just some sort like uh, like one person vehicle, very very narrow, very short, um, and even if you if you don't have any disabilities, it was really uncomfortable to sit in this uh, thing. But uh, it is still a collector's favorite uh, these days, and if. Uh, um, if you think of Sinclair as a as a computer producer, it was um, it was one of the companies uh, that started the first home uh, home computer systems uh, worldwide. Uh, in Germany, it was called ZX ZX81 um, in the early 80s um, or late 70s, um, and uh, they produced this kind of vehicle, but. Uh, well, it, it failed um, in a way of uh, there were not many of these vehicles sold and uh, Sinclair, um, the company went down um, in the late 80s, I, th I, I think it was, and uh, sold this whole space um, to another company. So, but this is just uh, some sort of design that's, uh, that's not the only one or the, the one, the, the, the last one of this kind. Um, there's a quite modern uh, modern uh, uh, thing um, yes it's 12 years now but it was the Aptera 2 it uh, it was sold uh, well none, none of none of them were, were, were sold uh, really it was just another good idea of having a small vehicle um, I think it uh, it uh, it was just w lower or less than one liter per hundred kilometers um, in uh, in fuel that it needed um, and all this stuff. The, so the the idea was good, and some people said it was really smart to do such a thing, but uh, it uh, it it wasn't really a. a, a a burner, so um, so you might have good ideas, and you, you you put some effort in really good stuff that you think they are, uh, that is good, um, and uh, 
it might fail because nobody wants it and that's some sort of usability um, question so what do we do with uh, with our knowledge and our abilities to produce things and uh, do we meet people's expectations uh, uh, or don't we so um, these two vehicles didn't so um, coming a bit away from uh, from all the car stuff is uh, so um, uh, so turning to the websites more and uh, see the analogy um, what cars and websites have in common it's a bit different I would say your website is some sort of service to people or it is not some sort it is a service to people and uh, your website technique is uh, like the drive into the service that you give so um, you want people to come to your service and um, to use it um, so um, what you build is a user interface so that people can use your services and the user interface is like the driveway and the entrance to your building so um, that's what you what you can you can maintain for yourself so the user agents, the browsers, and what what else stuff is used by the users. Um, these are the cars um, that people use to get to your service. And um, when people use cars, they take the um, the, um, the main roads and the highways to get to um, the town where your service is and um, they want to use your your driveway so the motorways and the roads are the web techniques people use to come to your driveway so um, just like clicking through websites using google or something like that and somehow they they come to your landing page and uh, they stand in front of your um your your property um, and they want to use uh, your driveway to go to come to your service and if this driveway is poorly built some or many cars will never reach you although they want and you want them to come but they can't come because the driveway doesn't work really really good so now I go a bit into into the websites and uh, times running faster than I thought so I uh, uh, I try to to be quick um, these are just uh, some some little examples for failures that uh, that happen and it's really it's just uh, the, uh, the the visible things um, the, the, um, the, the things that you, that you see, um, see see instantly it's just like uh, the buses is also that is out of control now um, in this page it's just like uh, in Germany but uh, in my area here it is uh, it is um, the online um, the online uh, uh, part of uh, how to come uh, by bus from this place to another place and this is uh, what happens sometimes uh, even today it happens sometimes this is a quite old uh, picture I took uh, I took in those days uh, just seven eight years ago or so the graphical route is just uh, it just like goes uh, across in zigzags somehow and uh, this is this is the wrong way so it's just uh, a wrong indicator for, for something so it's uh, better in this in this is in this example perhaps uh, that you when you can't see because it just uh, gives you a strange idea what of what happens when you use this bus so this is probably not a design failure but a more a database error but uh, I nonetheless have this uh, in here I tried to find some good new really really new examples for that it's a it's a bit difficult um, I put in this uh, this topic uh, just in a, uh, a week ago um, and I just tried to find some new stuff for that and uh, that was wasn't wasn't much time for for getting really good new examples for that so um, this is second uh, second little thing that uh, that I encountered myself um, when Firefox advised wrongly what to do to get uh, to your to, to 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 the start page of your browser browser, so when you see my mouse, I hope you can see it. Um, here is uh, the part that is wrong. It's in German. I have the translation here. Click the close button of this tab to view your start page, and that was the wrong place because uh, this is this wasn't the tab that I had to close and I haven't even uh, um, 
close button um, um, that I can click here. So um, what happened here as a mistake is um, the people who, who built this, uh, this advice, they didn't even know their own product uh, and the variety of different views you as a user can, can, uh, can, uh, can set up um, for the software. So um, this was just uh, a little thing um, that makes people think what they did wrong, although they didn't didn't uh, do anything wrong. It was just the advice it was wrong. So my advice um, from this side is know your product and advise wisely. Uh, don't uh, don't advise uh, something like um, click on the top right. And you know all it's uh, when you when you have a, um, a responsive design, um, top right is not always uh, the the correct um, um, position um, in all views you have of your website when uh, when um, you want to to have anybody clicked um, on some special hyperlink or so, just like um, these. Uh, these different views with breakpoints and in user interfaces uh, when you have a smaller viewport or something like that that uh, that uh, leads to to a very um, different way of uh, describing what users have to do so one of my favorite um, failures of uh, my personal favorite failures of uh, of the last couple of years is um, this website, um, and this is uh, this was my BlackBerry I used um, until uh, one two years ago um, when I wanted to uh, open a website. It was a totally failure because it said. Uh, um, just turn your smartphone around um, so you have the right view to our website. Otherwise, you can't see anything. But this was a square screen, so I couldn't couldn't put my my uh, smartphone into into a, a portrait mode, or, um, so in, uh, in a horizontal mode or vertical mode, whatever they wanted. It didn't work, and I tried everything. I, I just uh, forced my browser, my um, smartphone browser, to to load the um, the desktop version of this site, but uh, it uh, it didn't want me to to get any information. So this is uh, a really really nice <laughs> nice example for for a complete complete failure of um, of accessibility. The mistake is here. Um, the designers or the programmers or whatever, they were smart enough to recognize that it is a smartphone device accessing the information, uh, but uh, they failed totally in thinking of variety of systems, viewports, um, user agents and all this stuff. And um, this, is a, this is a very common problem because um, you, perhaps you, you can remember this thing with um, best viewed with uh, 800 by 600 pixels um, with on, 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 on the 90s uh, websites or something like that. Um, and it's the same we do today. So we just test things with, uh, with Safari, with Firefox, with Edge, and then we are done oh, with Google, um, with a Google browser as well with Chrome. Um, and then we are done, we think, but we are not. And uh, the worst thing you, uh, the, that can happen is that you just um, have some sort of switches um, in your systems that just check which browser is it. And now I, I adapt my my um, my my user interface to this browser browser and um, and uh, give the the best quality I can get for this browser. And sometimes somebody with a different browser comes uh, comes to your page, um, and it doesn't work anymore. And um, this is uh, a problem with uh, the the DFN um, website, for example, the Deutsches Forschungsnetzwerk. I have a I have a, a Mozilla browser. Um, um, that I use um, regularly. It's uh, it's a sea monkey. The whole Mozilla suite um, with browser browser um, with uh, mailing program and all this stuff. And when I go to the website and there is a video conference or something like that, it always tells me that I don't have the 
the newest version of this browser because obviously they think I have a Firefox with a special user agent um, string that uh, that my browser doesn't give it. So um, I can't use the website with this browser. So don't design for, for specific browsers or specific systems. Try to be open for everything that is on the web so that's uh, the thing um, you have to you have to expect so do not design for specific attributes like user agents viewport sizes javascript only you can do that but uh, that's a bit annoying for for some reasons when when people um, just uh, um, don't or can't use JavaScript, uh, that really happens. You ha must have a fallback um, all the time, at least uh, a, a very, a very um, simple web page that gives the same information um, for that. So this specific mistake is rare, but uh, it is very similar to failures in screen reader use. So when uh, screen reader users, blind people, um, use the web and they do it quite uh, a lot. So um, this is uh, a very good thing that uh, that we have this this in this information. Uh, possibility for for all people and that blind people can use it uh, the same way we do but um, sometimes it's a it's a problem or very often it's a problem because what the the web uh, intends to do to inform us and to give us services and all this stuff and uh, the web itself the technique is accessible always um, but when we work with it with it um, and we present information we are the ones who 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 gives the barriers, uh, who, who make it uh, less accessible when we don't think of all this, uh, this different uh, people and different te techniques out in the world. Uh, so um, what I see with, with my, or saw with my uh, Blackberry, um, it is the same um, problem that have, uh, um, that the, the blind people have when, when they have, uh, a special technology and they want to use uh, the web as well so this is what uh, um, this is very similar so there are many problems with websites on a square screen that's what I encountered uh, as long as I used uh, the Blackberry myself uh, regularly um, and uh, if a site does not work in square mode it's a good indicator that it is not accessible and um, this is the stuff I always uh, saw in the last couple of years um, so um, this was just like oh I tested with my with my Blackberry and if it's if that's okay this is oh, this might work uh, for blind people as well the, that was a was, was some sort of test I did myself when I was uh, on the way somewhere so you now speaking of websites um, the same what I uh, what I wrote um, in the in the slide before is uh, if a site does not work in square mode it is a good indicator that it's not accessible even for people with disabilities but if a site does not work with keyboard control and screen reader speech, uh, screen reader talks to me um, with the computer voice. So um, it's uh, a much better indicator that it is not accessible. And what you shouldn't forget is it's not accessible even for many people without disabilities. So it's not just a dis disability problem we have here. It's a, it's a problem for, for the whole world, for, for many, many, many other people. Um, um, apart from from disabilities so um, if you think um, uh, of something like um, uh, in development tools I guess when you are developers you you have uh, have um, a text editor and well I would bet I don't know but I did all the time I use copy and paste with keyboard and I saved my 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 work with with keyboard control just with shortcuts but just think of that I guess most of you do the same think of that you have a, you you find a very smart new text editor and say wow this is so great this is a really good thing uh, unbelievable functions and uh, it just guesses everything I want to type uh, just just uh, beforehand so um, and I just have to have to um, have to uh, 
type enter and it does it or something like that something really really cool thing but what if it misses the shortcuts for copy paste saving all the stuff you are used to so you would just say well what the, what the heck is happening here this is just a cool thing to use but i can't use my 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 keyboard for well I, i'm using it for typing all the time because i'm programming things uh, so um why can't i use a keyboard for copy paste save open and all this stuff for printing or just this stuff you're forced to use a mouse what would you do you would just say well it's a bit annoying but perhaps this is just uh, nonetheless a cool uh, text editor perhaps so um yes uh, you can you, you can still use it because you can see but for blind people this would be essential so they can't just use a mouse and go to the mouse and, uh, and grab it and, and click um, on the mouse uh, click the mouse cursor somewhere here somewhere there that doesn't work so this is some kind of thing I try to to make you understand that uh, it's just um, we are all using keyboard control from time to time or sometimes really often and um, we um, we would we would really miss it if it didn't work. So um, in websites, it's, it's it's essential to 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 use it. So I look at the time. It's okay. Just one two minutes. Uh, Richard, you just say something if uh, if it's uh, if it's getting too close to the next part. Uh, there's uh, half an hour between. Your, ah, okay. So I just in the have, next one, uh, so you can wrap it up at least. I think it's it would be good if people have some time to grab coffee afterwards. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> it's just five fine. minutes more, I guess. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. Okay, so this uh, so this is uh, about universal design and uh, um, about what I said. Just uh, accessibility is not disability related design. So you're not designing for people with a disability so you're you're designing for the whole world just one design for everybody and um, just uh, what the mistake that happens uh, you don't want it but it happens uh, is that you just forget the keyboard control um, you just do something and the keyboard control is completely broken although you didn't want that it just happens but um, the normal web uh, techniques they provide the keyboard control it's just uh, just something that always works uh, but sometimes doesn't or quite often doesn't because uh, we just did something with um designing our user interface uh, and just uh, just just dropping everything that worked perfectly that uh, that's the thing that happens so what you should do is uh, never design for specific hard or software you will never know all combinations of uh, of, of IT that it use is used by by um, by people who visit your services or your your user interface. So it's um, it's for operating system user agents, screen sizes. Then there are these additional tools like um, browser add-ons uh, that do something different things with or with what you you present or, or even screen readers for for blind people who, who talk to uh, to them and, and and speak out loudly um, what is seen on the on the on the web page so one good approach for implementing a new feature or just a completely new, uh, new user interface could be and this is just uh, an example because there are a couple of ways to do things really good and this one sh might not even work for all what you do but um, it is just one thing you you should have in mind is just define the goal uh, or the purpose of your action so what uh, do you what, what is the goal what what do you want to to improve or what do you want to build um, this is the easiest part of all of it because most of you do it this way so you have a concrete uh, goal where you um, um, where you want to go so that is defined so the next question you should you should ask yourself is which HTML tags and attributes serves this purpose? T 
totally without um, the question, how should it look? So it's just like what HTML um, elements, um, tags, attributes are there um, in the world and which of those are the ones that fit to this purpose, to this functionality I need. So this is the first thing you should think about. Avoid divs. Um, div is only for group 